Hi, welcome to Maximize Living. I'm Dr. Patrick Anderson. We're going to explore healthy ways that you can improve yours and your family's health through the five essentials. Those five essentials are things you can do every day to improve and build a healthier body. They are maximize mind, maximize nervous system, maximize quality nutrition, maximize oxygen and lean muscle, and lastly, minimize toxins. Most of these topics, people will do one or two things well, but many of them they're missing. So in our show, uh, Maximize Living, we're gonna cover these topics to improve yours and your family's health. Our group, Maximize Living, is a group of 450 chiropractors, and we serve throughout the United States and Canada, and we are the official chiropractors for USA Wrestling, USA Weightlifting, USA Martial Arts, uh, USA Track and Field, and also the NFL Retired Players Association, Ladies Professional Golf Association. So please stay tuned for more on Maximize Living. And welcome back to Maximize Living with Dr. Patrick Anderson. So Dr. Pat, before the break, you were talking about a maximized nervous system. Can you tell us what, that, what that's all about? Sure, maximized nervous system is one of our five essentials where we use, utilize a healthy spine and extremities to remove interference to the nervous system. People don't realize how the brain and spine work very well often. And so the brain sends signals down the spinal cord out these nerves to every organ, every muscle, every tissue, every joint in the body. The brain knows everything that's going on. And it does so because each of these organs, muscles, tissues, and joints send signals back to the spinal column and then back up to the brain. Three trillion signals a second. Wow. Yeah, it's amazing. Three trillion signals a second to command and control everything in your body. So for your uh, mouth to move, for your ears to hear, your eyes to see, your heart to beat, your lungs to breathe, your food to digest, and your body to move, it's all under direct control of your brain. So as a chiropractor, our job is to make sure that this is all functioning properly. For example, if you, have, uh, if you cut the nerve to your heart, what do you think would happen? Your heart would stop beating, right? Right. But if you put pressure on that, what do you think would happen? Could that build disease? or cause dysfunction so. in your heart. That and abnormal, sounds scary. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and wouldn't that then be true with every organ, muscle, tissue of your body? Yes. And that's what we do as a chiropractor, is we take care of that spine and nervous system. If you can't take, if you're, these nerves have to be uh, no pressure whatsoever for fully functioning body. Now many people take care of themselves in other ways where they're uh, eating well, moving well, but they're not getting their nervous system checked and it's often the missing link. Wow. When you see it like this, it really puts it into focus too and makes you think, wow, this yeah. could be scary, you exactly. know? <laughs> and what's fascinating is the spine, the purpose of the spine is to house and protect the brain stem and spinal cord. But life's forces, falls, strains, accidents, one-sided sports will shift that spine out of alignment, causing forward head posture and rotations and high hips and shoulders. And that's what we do as a chiropractor, is evaluate those misalignments. We call those misalignments subluxations. Kind of a tongue twister, sounds yeah. like subway station. It does. So not subway station, <laughs> subluxation, yeah, right? Think, so so yeah. what, what is this? You gotta say it once to understand Yeah, subluxation. It. It's that misalignment of the spine that interferes with normal nerve function. And when that nerve gets pinched, Wherever that nerve goes, that organ doesn't work as well. Ooh. The muscles go weak, so we use muscle testing in our exams. And very importantly, the joint wears abnormally, just like tire wear in a car. So the joint will wear much faster when it's out of alignment. So we call that misalignment a subluxation, and our job as a chiropractor is to locate those and correct that so the body can function better. So you talked a little bit about it's one-sided sports and all these different things that can cause it. I mean, how are people getting it? Do most people have them? I and mean, how does this happen? Well, you know, that's a great question. Most people will get subluxation. Very few of us get uh, through life unscathed. Yeah. So subluxations can come from things like birth. Uh, the first subluxation is often at birth for both the mother and child. But then as a child goes uh, long sitting, a child falls some 2,000 times before they're age two. 
Yeah, I believe it. And that yeah. long sitting in school, uh, um, for most people, stress will cause it, uh, falls and injuries, heavy lifting, and then even toxicity can cause subluxation. So there are multiple causes. How does stress do it? Are they just... Well, it's a heightened tension in your nervous system and muscular system that will pull your spine over, out of alignment over time. And the shoulders up at the ears, yeah, too, sure. you see that a mm -hmm, lot. Exactly. So how do you know then if you have it? You go to the chiropractor and get it checked out? Yeah, exactly. There, you, you know, the funny thing is um, people don't, you can have subluxations and you won't feel it because not every subluxation hurts, it depends. Because you hear about the pinched nerve, you feel it, like the tingling. You, you would think that makes yeah. sense. So one in um, two people have chronic pain and chronic pain shrinks the brain, so that's pretty important. But um, most people will uh, not know all of their subluxation, so it's good to get checked. The only really know, way to know for sure is to get checked by a chiropractor. Yeah, definitely very important to do. As you can see here, it, it could be a big deal. Um, so we just have a couple seconds left. Um, you wanted to talk a little bit too about low back pain on the next segment, right? Yes, we're going to actually have some fun and we'll do a low back exam and show a number of different uh, exercises that are very helpful for the back. And I think I'm going to jump in then and, and yeah, try some of them too. We'll see how that goes. Stay with us. And welcome back to Maximize Living with Dr. Patrick Anderson. So we're talking about low back pain now. Just how common is this? Well, Stacy, it's an epidemic. One out of three people have low back pain today, wow. according to World Health, World Health Organization. One third of people. Yeah, and chronic pain shrinks the brain, as we mentioned earlier. And so it's really important to deal with it. That's scary. So what, what can we do? So I'm not having pain right now, but how do I know that I don't have issues? You don't know if something's brewing or not unless we check you. Yikes. So can you check me? I sure would love to. <laughs> All right, so what do we do first here? Step right up on the bilateral scales. Uh, okay, look just like this. Look straight ahead. All right. And what we do here is we look to see if you're within five pounds from side to side. And while the scales are setting, I'm looking at posture such as high shoulders, high hip, any curvatures in the spine, any rotations in the pelvis. Uh, even look at the feet to see if they're turned in. And then step back and we go through a range of motion on a typical examination. Go ahead and face that way. Okay. And we do side bending first. We're looking for a free and full range. And then we do rotations. And then a loading on an orthopedic test to see how the spine takes load. So far, so good. All right. <laughs> and then bend forward as far as you can, like you're touching your toes. Excellent. Straighten and lean back. And many people with spinal issues would have pain on a number of these movements. So All far, right. so good. Yes, indeed. I'm encouraged. Sit right here, facing okay. that way for me. And I'd ask you to hold your legs straight out and then bend forward. If there's any pinching of the nerves in the spine of serious nature, it will often cause pain somewhere along this way doing this test. All right, relax your legs. And then reflexes. Oh, I know this one. <laughs> and we'll test here. And there, good. Now, if you would lie on your back. Okay. Leg length is a very important test where we want to see if there's any um, differential between the leg length. If you have subluxation, often one side of your body will contract and you'll actually walk around with a short leg. Okay. So we evaluate the short leg like that. And then test the hamstring flexibility. Most people should be able to get up to 80 degrees. Many people can't. Then we test the strength. Hold here. Okay. Don't let me push. Good. Turn in. Hold. And raise this leg. Good flexibility. Hold here. Don't let me push. And turn in. Don't let me push. Good. Now hold your legs six inches high. Both of them together. Now that's a test for if you have low back pain, often that will hurt. Okay, so far so good. And then let's go ahead and have you lie face down. Okay. And another leg length check in this nature. Tells us about the pelvic rotation. Raising this leg like this will challenge the sacroiliac joint. If there's a problem, that will often hurt. And then a very important test is to test the gluteus maximus strength. So hold your leg right there. Don't let me push. Good. 
Many people with low back pain have trouble with this particular test. Test that and hold here. In fact, one of my patients was Mr. Universe, and he had uh, hurt his back, and he had, he had all the muscle in the world, but he had absolutely no strength in his gluteus maximus. He could, could push it down very easily. And right after, wow. uh, an adjustment to his lower back that controls the nerve supply to the muscle, he had his full strength. See, there's no shame in that then. Mr. Universe, if Mr. <laughs> Universe can do it, you can too. And then we like to palpate the spine. One of the things I like to do is put pressure on the spine. To, if there's a subluxation present, often it'll be tender. Same with the sacroiliac joints. The muscles in the hips will be tender if there's any trigger points. And then across the crest of the hips. And then feel and palpate each of the muscles along the spine, trapezius muscles, if there's abnormal tension or misalignment. So this spinal exam is essential in determining whether the chiropractic care is necessary and whether x-rays will be needed. Uh, most people have no idea of what their spine really is until they have it professionally checked. So it's our recommendation that, Stacy, everyone get a, get a checkup to see where they're at, especially kids, because many times they have a lot of stresses in their life with all their falls and difficult births, and you don't want to wait till you're 20 years old. We'll be back after the break and we'll continue on with x-rays. Thank you. And welcome back to Maximize Living with Dr. Patrick Anderson. So we're talking about subluxation today and we're, we're wondering now, can you actually see this in an x-ray? You've, you've looked at me, we've tried some things out, but when you're looking inside, how does it actually look? Yes, exactly. Um, you can see uh, misalignments on the spine on x-ray, but to diagnose subluxation, we actually combine the examination and the case history and the x-rays to determine if there's uh, subluxation. So this is a very detailed side view of the neck where we do advanced measurements on the spine and you want to know these measurements on your body because it makes a big difference in how you feel, how you function, and how you wear and tear. So this is a side view of the neck. So some of the things we look for is forward head posture. This particular patient has 30 millimeters of forward head posture. And that's for every inch forward the head is, it's like wearing a 10 pound hat. Wow. So all day long, Some that gets to be there. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, And it compresses the spine. And we also look for a curve in the neck. And if you notice on this patient, there is zero curve in the neck. We're looking for a 43 degree arc. And that's best for the spinal cord so it doesn't get stretched and tractioned. Then some of the other details for this, for example, these two lines here should be parallel and this one's extended so much, too much. So it's actually jamming the first vertebra against the base of the skull compared to the second, first and second space. Ouch. So those are some of the things we look at on the x-ray. And then well, this, first, this is the first thoracic vertebra, the first one below your neck. And that should have about a 30 degree angle so it gives a nice base for a curve in the neck. So that's uh, critically important things that we look at and actually measure on each person. And our goal then is to change those findings as we apply our care, our home care, and our exercises. Now would they be feeling this? Would they be having some pain now with some of these they things? They may very well have pain. But in this particular case, uh, this person does have more upper back pain. Uh, but there's disc degeneration at one, two, three, four levels where the spaces are much narrower than up higher. Yeah, I And see that's that. the wear and tear that can happen whether you feel it or not. And that's why it's so important for people to get that checkup, make sure their body is in good balance. So important, yeah. definitely, because you, you just might not know. Exactly. Yeah. The next view is going to be a view where we're looking at the person like they're standing facing that way. And we're going to view their... Uh, kind of a profile view. Yeah, yeah, we'll flip through. And that, right like that. And this view is you're standing behind the patient. They're facing away, and this is the left side of the body. And here you can see significant misalignments. This is supposed to be completely straight up and down. And you can see significant rotations in the upper back here, in the mid back here. And we measure each of these angles. That top vertebra is three degrees side slip to the right. So this is, how you combine that with forward head posture and loss of curve, and you end up creating a lot of pain and wear and tear that doesn't need to be there. 
And will that keep getting worse too? Is Gravity never quits. Yeah. And so over time it continues to wear and tear. So the key is to address it early uh, and prevent it as much as possible. But if you're having chronic pain, uh, very important to get this type of examination uh, to determine is there biomechanics that are altered causing your problems. And maybe that could, could fix things right there. Absolutely. Good to know. Our next film is going to be a side view of the lower back. And, and in this view, we're looking for the curve angle here and the angle of the sacrum. So that sacrum is at 36 degrees. There should be a 43 degree arc here. And you don't want that upper back as a upper part of the lower back. You don't want that protruding too far backwards. And a lot of people are too rounded there. Uh -huh. And it creates a lot of stress in their back. So there's a lot of different scenarios that can occur. Uh, with the with these x-rays, but those are what that's what we're looking at and then lastly our next view is a front view of the pelvis and This is just a fascinating view We learned so much from it because here we're seeing what's the femur heights What is the sacrum level? What are the hip heights? What kind of rotation here you see an issue here at the fourth lumbar? We're measuring and curve angles in the low back six degrees left four degrees right and all these are very valuable as to how we're going to adjust that patient so there's literally dozens of different measurements that we use to give you the best possible adjustment and there's really so much to it as well it's not just your spine you're looking at all this your yeah. hips it all connects the foot the knee the hip all connects to see what kind of pelvic balance we have here and uh, this is what we look at and we uh, design a corrective care plan to uh, bring people to their best health. And coming up next, I believe we're gonna try some exercises yes. out. Uh, so I'll try some of those out and we'll see how we can maybe help correct some of these things too before they start before There's a they lot you can do at home. Right. There's a lot you can do at home. So stay tuned, we'll have that coming up next. And welcome back to Maximize Living with Dr. Patrick Anderson. I am about to attempt some low back exercises, I hear, so we'll see how this goes. What's first? Well, first one we're going to do is one where you're lying on your back. Okay. And it's called a lumbar twist. Now these are my five favorite exercises. We call them the back five, that they're both good for prevention and if you even have, currently have trouble, these are usually quite helpful. First one is to bend your knees at a 90 degree angle, hips at 90, knees at 90. And often this is done on a floor, and the arms out to the sides. And then you roll your legs one way and roll your legs the other way, preferably without slipping off the bench. <laughs> That's the biggest challenge right now. And go as far as you can when you're on the floor to have your knees touch. This is wonderful movement for a full range of motion in the back. Excellent. Now while we have you lying there, the next one, is, is awesome for the lower back because it stabilizes the back muscles right around the sacrum level in the lower back. And it's called a pelvic lift. In this one, we ask Stacy to lift her hips up in the air as high as she can and hold for about two seconds and then lower down. And we do about 20 repetitions of this one. It's a very safe exercise, but obviously if any of these cause pain, uh, don't do them and, and get checked. And now she does that quite easily. We can make this a little harder. Oh what boy. we'll do is raise <laughs> one leg that. an inch off the table and then push up. There you go. Much harder and uh, down and up and down. So, you know. Yeah, you do feel a difference with that. Yes, it really works differently. And this tells the, your doctor a lot about your back because you're, we're going to see how stable you are and strong you are uh, as far as holding your spine in good position. Go ahead and switch legs. Excellent. That's a great workout. And you know, typically you do 15, 20 reps of this one after you do a number of uh, two-legged ones. The next one everyone's familiar with is uh, abdominal exercises or crunchies. You don't want to do a full sit-up because that'll actually strain the lower back. But doing a partial movement just to about a 30 degree angle is all the further the abdominal muscles pull. So what we can do is just have you reach with your ha hands to touch your knees, do a trunk curl and the head up towards the ceiling. Like this? Yeah. And then up like that. Perfect. And you can do anywhere from 20 repetitions to 100 repetitions if you want. I think that's a common mistake people make. They go up too high. They go up too high or they have their hands behind their head and they're pulling their neck down, often starting their sit up by jerking on their neck. And that's, yeah. that's just too much. You see that a lot. All right, the next one is side bridges. If you'd face the this way. 
And this is a perfect order to do them. And then we ask uh, from the feet to go ahead and lift your hips as high as she can. And just hold right there. And this bridge you want to do for 15 to 30 to even 60 seconds. And then you can go to a uh, front plank. Like that. And then a side plank uh, on the other side. And each one of these 15 to 60 seconds. Now if you can't do it very well, go ahead and bend your knees. You can bend your legs like this and straighten your back here. And you just can either hold it from the knees or go up and down. That's easier just to go up and down than to hold a plank. And that really strengthens the down muscle here. It's very important with curvatures that happen in the upper part of the lower back, right in this area. Very helpful to stabilize the back. So our last one is where you lie, or you uh, go on your hands and knees, please. Okay. And in this one, it's both a strength exercise and a co uh, coordination exercise. We want you to raise opposite arm and leg, and that's the hard part of this, is remembering which is opposite. Okay. Go ahead. All right. And you reverse after one second, you just go back and forth. So this is particularly good for the lower back and hip muscles, and surprisingly good for the upper back as you raise the arm in the air. It really helps with the tension that people develop up in the upper back region. Yeah, that's really common, especially people that work in offices, I think. Excellent. So we recommend doing these exercises uh, first thing in the morning, like the price tag to the day, and they also, after a long day, do them again. Twice a day is really good, if you, especially if you have a very physical job or if you've been sitting too long. Just start exercising or if you have a lot of stress, do some exercise. It's a reset. That really does help quite a bit. Definitely with the stress, you feel a difference. You just feel better. Mm -hmm. It just releases all that adrenaline that you've had all day. So thanks so much. And it really wasn't, wasn't too difficult. So definitely try that twice a day. Stay with us. We have more coming up right after this. Thank you for watching our show on Maximize Living. Today we covered lower back pain, which is an epidemic in our country. One in three people have lower back pain, and according to the World Health or or Organization. And it is the number one disability in the United States. So if you or your family is having problems with lower back, please give our office a call at your earliest convenience, 608-833-1282, and get a checkup. A checkup is just to determine what is going on in your spine and structure. There's no obligation for care. But also remember, if you're doing nutrition well, you're doing your fitness, even watch some of the toxins you put in your body, and you even have a positive mental attitude, all of that doesn't matter nearly as much as having a sound functional nervous system that fully innervates your body, keeping you strong and healthy. So your immune system works well, your sports and ac exercise activities work well, you sleep well at night. It all comes from a sound and functional nervous system. As Aristotle says, health is a matter of choice, not a mystery of chance. Thank you.